I'm here today to talk to you about the power of driving simulators in law enforcement training. Hello, my name is George Buck. I currently serve as a law enforcement instructor here at the Fletzy. I teach law enforcement skills, tactics, and research emerging technology. In 2014, I retired from the Pennsylvania State Police. My first eight years were dedicated to patrol duties on the Pennsylvania Turnpike, where I learned firsthand that dangerous pursuits and emergency vehicle operations often end in crashes. I encountered injured coworkers and experienced personnel shortages due to worker compensation issues. I witnessed mangled law enforcement vehicles sitting at many patrol stations. I investigated accidents regularly with contributing factors being speed, alcohol, drugs, fatigue, and distractions. Annually, I attended the Pennsylvania State Police Memorial Ceremony to show respect to the officers that died in the line of duty. The knowledge gleaned from my field experience led me to transfer to the State Police's Bureau of Training and Education. During this assignment, I achieved the rank of Sergeant where I commanded the department's basic tactics and EVOC programs. As I alluded to, I have taught law enforcement driving skills for approximately 20 years. And I believe more training is necessary to improve the driver's ability to detect developing situations, better known as hazard perceptions. My colleagues and I continue to research cognitive science and emerging technologies. Cognitive science is the study of how the human brain, such as how the brain functions and processes information. Based off of current research in the realm of cognitive science, simulators show increased cognitive retention. Simulations can be implemented to teach students task management, decision making, and probably most importantly, controlled responses by placing the student in a safe, real-world simulated environment. Let's compare early and modern-day use of force training and reflect on how important it is to train the adult learner in understanding and controlling emotions. Historical statistics published by the FBI entitled Law Enforcement Officers Killed and Assaulted, better known as LEOCA, showed that from 1935 through the early 1980s, attacks against police officers were the main killer of law enforcement. Law enforcement took steps to mitigate the problem by reviewing training curriculum and expanding instruction to include simulators. Use of force simulators allowed law enforcement to train in a safe environment and develop realistic type situations. The simulator training introduced students to effective or emotional learning. This style of learning benefited officers by promoting better decision making and balanced responses. According to a 28 year study conducted by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, initiated in 1983 and completed in 2011, motor vehicle crashes are now the number one cause of death for law enforcement officers. Budget constraints combined with growing demand for increased driver training has left law enforcement agencies struggling to find cost-effective and innovative ways to increase and enhance driver training programs. Recognizing a multitude of technological advancements, agencies are exploring driving simulators for trainee development, which has been almost non-existent in law enforcement driver training. It's time to use driving simulations to improve cognitive and effective learning. Driver training needs to expand beyond just testing students for driving proficiencies. The Federal Law Enforcement Training Center serves as an interagency law enforcement training organization for more than 95 federal agencies. The FLETC also provides services to state, local, and international law enforcement agencies, which makes FLETC a strategic partner in law enforcement community. Traditionally, the Driver and Marine Division, known as DMD, has utilized various modes of instruction to teach law enforcement driving techniques. 
The DMD staff employs a blended learning environment which includes classroom instruction, hands-on demonstration, and technological resources. In March of 2016, the Driver and Marine Division and the Training Innovation Division initiated a validation study on the line of travel, which is basically a modified race line. The line of travel is defined as the most efficient path to steer a vehicle when traveling through a turn. It is commonly taught in emergency vehicle operations training, such as EVOC. This study is to examine the contrast of performance outcomes between driving simulators and actual range driving. The study will also evaluate near knowledge transfer. The study will allow FLETSI to explore, analyze, and dissect curriculum to improve driving methodologies. Let's look at the three research questions. Research question number one, can participants who receive training in a blended learning environment, that's through both training on simulation and live driving, gain a better understanding of the principles of line of travel on a cognitive test than those trained with traditional driver marine methods. Question number two, can participants who receive training, again, in a blended learning environment, both simulated and live driving, perform better on standard driving ranges, especially practical examinations, than those trained with traditional methodologies? Research question number three, can participants who receive training with a blended and traditional learning environment transfer that knowledge when confronted with a new environment? Now I'm gonna hand things over to Dr. Rick Giovango, who's with the Applied Research Branch to speak to you about research design. Thanks, George. Hello, I'm Rick Giovango, and I'm gonna to speak to you how we designed this study. First, when you do a study like this, you need participants. Participants enrolled at the College of Coastal Georgia and FLETSI partner organizations, non-law enforcement, were recruited to volunteer participants in this study. The research design. Day one, upon arrival, all participants were welcomed and received brief introductions and assigned participant numbers to keep anonymity throughout the study. Both the control and experimental groups were given a one hour classroom lecture on line of travel. Range six was the practice range for both groups. For this study, L3 developed the driving simulation package to be an exact replica of FLETSI range six. After the one hour lecture on line of travel, the research volunteers are divided into two groups, control and experimental. The control group went to a traditional outdoor driver marine range six to practice. The experimental group were taken to the driving simulators to practice driving on a virtual driver marine range six. Day two, both control and experimental groups trained together utilizing an outdoor EVOC range six with identical equipped automobiles driver marine certified instructors. This ensured consistency with the equipment instructors and instruction. To evaluate the participants driving skills, data was collected with several RaceLogic VBOX Pro video systems. The VBOX records GPS logging and has four bullet cameras, an internal circuit for reliable recording of the acceleration, braking, speed, and RPMs, which logs directly to a secure digital card. For this study, the cameras were placed on the front windshield, the rear window, and on the hands of the driver. To maintain consistency and to address any concerns regarding inter-rater reliability, one instructor evaluated all of the practical evaluations. Using video and data collected from the V-Box, the instructor could view the braking, acceleration, the driver's view, and the driver's hand position. All of these were graded elements of the time practical evaluation. 
After the participants were finished with their range six evaluation, the participants were taken to range seven, a new environment. Then the participants were allowed to drive the course one time for safety purposes. After that round, the participants then drove the course for a practical evaluation of their driving skills utilizing line of travel. After the evaluations on range seven, the participants were taken to a classroom to complete a written test. This multiple choice test consists of participants watching multiple videos of various roadway curves for a limited amount of time. Then the participants had to choose the correct answer. I hope this presentation has helped you understand a little more about the power of simulations in law enforcement training. Tune in for our second edition for the results and trends. I am Rick Giovingo and this has been Fletzy Talks.